This video is called Multi-Objective Optimization, the way to balance conflicting performance metrics in 5G networks. I'm Emil Bjornsson, I'm an associate professor at Linköping University, and this is joint work with Edward Jorsvik, Mero Endeba, and Björn Ottersten. So this is about wireless communications, and wireless communication is becoming an integral part of our everyday lives. Our smartphones is still used for voice calls, but for a variety of other things as well, such as video streaming, gaming, web browsing, social networks, and there will be a next big thing that we don't know about before, but will drive the uses of these devices and other smart devices in the future. For that reason, the data traffic is growing rapidly. So it was growing by 61% per year between 2013 and 2018, which is an exponential growth for the users. So going from say 200 megabyte per month per person in the world up to 2.2 gigabyte per person per month over just five years. And that means that even if we have a network that works well today, we will have to build new network technologies in the future that can deliver higher and higher data rates. So where are we today? Well, the network technology is based on something that we call cellular networks. So we could divide the coverage area into cells we have a base station in each cell and it's serving all of the users in that cell, transmitting to them in the downlink and receive the data in the uplink. And there's different standards going from 2G to 3G to 4G and now 5G is about to be released. And there is more and more focus on data traffic. We are no longer focusing so much on voice calls, but to transmit as much data as possible. So at least up to 4G, the main design metrics has been to get a high peak data rate in the networks. So the optimization problem that we as network designers have solved is to maximize the peak data rate measured in bits per second, subject to various network constraints, such as how much power we can spend, what type of time and frequency resources can we allocate, what fairness do we like to have between different users, what cellular architecture can we consider, and we will be limited by interference from within the cell and from other cells. However, high peak data rates are never for everyone. So if we put out the base station at one location, here we are showing what data rates users are getting at other locations. If we are very close to the base station, we will get a peak value, which is the value here around 50, 60 megabits per second. But then it goes down very quickly and we will have low rate at the cell edge. And the problem is also that the traffic demands that the users are having is independent of where they are. So it's easily satisfied for users in the center, but users at the edges, they will have to be turned on for a much longer time in order to get the data they need, or they will just give up and not use the service at all. So for that reason, when 5G was designed, we talked about a number of other performance metrics in addition to peak rates. For example, the average rate measured in megabits per second per active user in a network, that should grow by 10 to 100 times compared to previous technologies. It won't happen immediately, but when 5G is fully developed. The average area rate in megabits per second per square kilometer should grow by 1000 times the energy efficiency measured in megabits per joule should also grow with 1000 times, which essentially means we should be able to get this higher area rate without spending more power than in the past. And the number of active devices per square kilometer should grow by 10 to 100 times. So this 10 times 100 or this 10 times 100 is giving us this 100 or 1000 times higher area rates. So what you see here is that we have a list of different performance metrics for them. So how can we optimize multiple metrics like this at the same time? Is it possible? Can all of them be optimized at the same time? Well, the answer to that comes from the area of multi-objective optimization that I'm gonna talk about in this video. So let's go through some basic assumptions. Say that we have M performance metrics that we are caring about. So these are objectives that should be maximized. So these are functions, G1, G2, Gm and all of them are functions of choices we are making our design, characterized here by a vector x. And this function could be user rate, area rate, energy efficiency, for example, all those things that I mentioned before. And 
our optimization resources is that we can select x in different ways. For example, we might be able to select the power, time frequency blocks, network or hardware architecture in various ways and that is characterized by this vector x. So a feasible resource utilization is to pick x from something that we call calligraphic x, which is the resource bundle. These are all the possible choices of power blocks, architectures that we are able to choose between. So what we're having here is that suppose the resource bundle contains three different dimensions, x1, x2, x3, then there will be a certain shape of a region of different things that we can selecting. For example, everything on this boundary and within, but not outside it. So this is the resource bundle. And for every point here, we can compute the values of g1 and g2 and so on. And that gives us an attainable objective set. So one value here for g1, one value for g2 for every value in the resource bundle. And by selecting uh, any set here, we will get any of the points here. So this is what we need to do. So how can we then figure out when we have this possible different values for the different objectives, what we should choose when we design the network? Well, the conventional optimization approach here is that we select one of the metrics and we say, this is my prime objectives. And then I'm turning all of the other objectives into constraints. So the optimization problem that we are solving then is that we would like to maximize, say, G1 with respect to X, and we would like to say select X from the resource bundle. And then for all of the other metrics, G2 to GM, we have selected in advance some values, C2, CM. These are the values that we would like to achieve with these metrics. And when we solve something like this, we will get a scalar number as our solution. And this is what is the best value we can get on G1 given these constraints. But the question is, is there just one metric that we care the most about that we would like to maximize? And even if there is, how can we select C2 and CM? Isn't that very, very hard in order to not limit us too much when it comes to G1? And in order to not forcing ourselves to do like this, we can instead turn to multi-objective optimization, where we consider all M metrics as what we would like to maximize. So there is no ordering, there is no preconceptions that certain metrics are more important than other ones. So our optimization problem is now to maximize with respect to X, all of the metrics, G1, G2, GM. And we do it still by selecting feasible X values from the resource bundle. So say that we have two metrics, then we have this attainable set of Selecting so different x, we will get different points here in the blue region. Then the solution to this optimization problem is everything on the boundary here. That is the solution set. These are all the effective trade-offs that we can have. If we are picking a point within the region, we can improve it for any of the users without, or any of these metrics, without having to degrade the other one. But if we are on the boundary, if we would like to improve g1, we have to reduce G2. So there, there is a trade-off. So any of the points here on this boundary, which is called the Pareto boundary, is an effective trade-off. But we can't say which one is the best one because we have no ordering of the metrics. So why should we consider multi-objective optimization? Well, we want to understand which metrics that are conflicting and which ones that are aligned. And we cannot know that before we actually start studying it. And this is a common approach in certain engineering fields, in economics, to study trade-offs. It's rather new in communication theory. So here is two examples. We have G1 and G3. And what we can see here is that this region, here both of the objectives goes up, gets a higher value. So there they are aligned. But then if we want to push G1 up to a larger value than this, then we need to sacrifice G3, so then it goes down again. So here there is a high conflict. And one way of measuring that is to say that what is the largest value on G1 and the largest value on G3, let's put out that point. That is something I call the utopia point. That is what you ideally would like to achieve, the maximum on both metrics at the same time. And if the utopia point is very far from the actual region, jello here, we have a high conflict. Here is another case 
We're considering G2 and G3. And in this case, there is a trade-off. But, but first, they are aligned. They go up and then they go down. But if we want to increase G2 beyond this value, we don't have to sacrifice very much in G3. So utopia point is close. So they are relatively aligned. And without studying things with multi-objective optimization, we don't know in which cases we are. The a posteriori approach to multi-objective optimization is to generate regions like this, which can be computationally demanding. Look at the region and select an objective point, which point would we like to have, something on the Pareto boundary. And then we make an informed decision. So that is one approach in multi-objective optimization. The other approach that I'm going to mention is called the a priori approach. So we know that no objective solution exists, only subjective ones. But this happens whenever the utopia point is outside the region, which is the case in, when things are uh, of interest here. So we would like to find some kind of subjective but good solution. And how do we do that? Well, if I'm a network designer, I might have an opinion of what is good. So I can select a utility function something that takes uh, all of the metric values, the m of them, and maps it to a scalar number that says how satisfied am I going to be with each of the different metrics. So this describes my subjective preference. There is no objectively optimal solution, but it could be something that is subjectively optimal for me. And I'm selecting the function so that larger is better. And here are some possible ways of putting these things together. So we can select f as just summing up the different metrics, the sum performance. We can have something called proportional fairness. Then I take the metrics and multiply them together. So we can see this is the arithmetic mean, this is the geometric mean, essentially. And talking about means, well, we can take the harmonic mean, which is defined like this. Or we can take something like called max min fairness. We would like to maximize the minimum of the different metrics. And there is some kind of progression here between only caring about the aggregation of the different metrics or having fairness between the different metrics. We can put weights in these different cases, say that some metrics are more important than the other one and modify them in different ways. These are just examples of how you can select a utility function like this. But when we have selected it, we have a simplified problem. We have now to maximize, with respect to x, the function of all of the metrics, with respect to x only being in the resource bundle. The solution now is once again the scalar number. It gives us one point on the Pareto boundary. And it takes all metrics into account, but based on my subjective feeling. So this is the a priori approach. Let me finalize this video with an example. So designing a 5G network where we have 16 different cells. Each one contains a base station with n antennas and k uniform distributed users. So they are dropped randomly and then we drop them randomly and we average the performance for those users. Then what can we select? We can select the number of antennas on the base station, the number of users that we have in the cell and the power per antenna at the base station. This is my free different resources that I can select between. The research methodology will then be define the resource bundle, which values on n the number of antennas, k the number of users, and p the power per antenna, which values of those ones are feasible. Then we have defined the resource bundle, calligraphic x. Then we define the performance metrics. And finally, we analyze the problem with multi-objective optimization. So what could be my objectives? Well, I picked three of them here. The average user rate, bits per second per user, total area rate, bits per second per square kilometer, and finally, energy efficiency, bits per year. And for certain assumptions, I can generate a region like this, where we have the average area rate here, average user rate here, and energy efficiency over here. And we can look at the region and see which points are on the Pareto boundary here. And we see this three-dimensional thing here. But what we can see, for example, is that if we are looking at the area and user rates, it's these ones, 
Then if I would like to have a large average user rate, I'm here. And then we are at small values on the average area rate. So there is a strong trade-off between these things. So high use rate means low area rates. So we need to focus all our attention on the few users that are getting uh, high data rates, but then we cannot serve so many users. Alternatively, if we would like to have a high value on the average area rate, then we are here and we see the energy efficiency is high in those cases as well. So here we can get low use rates, but high error rates and at the same time get rather high energy efficiency. So only energy efficient at high error rate. And we should say that on the different points here, we have different number of users that is optimal, different power, different antennas, for example, selected from the resource bundle. So in summary, there is a paper called Multi-Objective Signal Processing Optimization, the way to balance conflicting metrics in 5D systems that was published in Signal Processing Magazine in November 2014. And here, we are providing this rigorous way to study problems with multiple performance metrics. So we can figure out what is an effective way of designing a future network. And 5G is characterized by these multiple metrics. And we have already put numbers on things that should be achieved, but it's not necessary that we can achieve all those goals at the same time. That is why 5G have been designed with something called network slicing, where you can uh, redesign the network with software to fit different metrics at different times. So we're essentially selecting different objective points and operate the network at different points at different points in time. But what we should do to design a good network is to analyze it with multi-objective optimization that requires new tractable models and new optimization algorithms to do a really good network design.